from Destroyer Dog, which rookie will start week one? Uh, C.D. Lamb is the only one that I think is really more or less guaranteed to start this year for the Dallas Cowboys. That's that's the path I think ends up happening for them. Maybe Trevon Diggs earns a role, but Lamb is the one that really jumps out to me. Speaking of C.D. Lamb, if you guys want a C.D. Lamb jersey, they are available for under 80 bucks at chatsports.com slash CD jersey. Our friends over at Fanatics have had some have some official Nike CD Lamb jerseys. You're not going to find it cheaper anywhere else. That's one of the crappy knockoffs. These are official Nike ones. So go check them out, chatsports.com slash CD jersey. America's team, who is facing a make or break season with the Cowboys? Several players. In fact, I plan on doing a video on that exact topic of players who really kind of have to step up right now for the Dallas Cowboys. From EB Games, Yannick Ngakwe trade. Um, don't get your hopes up. The, the cost in terms of a trade, you're priced looking at a, at a first round pick because you would assume if the Cowboys get Yannick, they're feeling good about their playoff chances. And then you got to pay him like $20 million a year. So I, I get why Cowboys fans, including UEB Games, would love to get him. I just think the cost across the board is probably a little bit too pricey and goes beyond what the Cowboys are searching for. All right, from Daniel Mor uh, uh, Moriarty and then a super chat from Passan. And I, I don't know what currency that is, but thank you, Passan. I appreciate that. Uh, says a first, fourth, and Cheeto for Jamal Adams. I assume would get the deal done. I think it's a very fair offer. I think where you might have issues for in, in terms of getting that that deal done is in in this fashion that the Jets didn't like that somehow Cowboys media knew what was being offered in in the Jamal Adams trade discussions. I think the Jets kind of blame the Cowboys uh, for for some of the the Adams not disaster, but issues those sides have run into so far. So I think it's a fair trade. I do wonder, though, if the cost for the uh, for the Jets or for the Cowboys in a, in a trade with the Jets for Jamal Adams is more expensive than other teams. Now, if you guys want a Jamal Adams trade, I want you guys to like this video. If you don't want Jamal Adams, and that is certainly a, a, a reasonable take, I want you to comment why, because there are some, some reasons why, why maybe it doesn't make the most sense. So if you want Jamal Adams, like the video. If you don't, comment why for me. All right, super chat from King J. Can Stills play special teams as a wide receiver for kick return specials? Well, you're, you're not going to make Kenny Stills your kick return guy for a couple of reasons. A, he's never been a kick return guy. He was a punt returner briefly in Miami 2018, but nothing special there. His speed means maybe you could have him play some, you know, punt coverage, punt gunner type of roles. Hasn't done a ton of that in his NFL career. Really has not been a special teamer. But then again, neither is Devin Smith. So if you want someone to fill that vertical speedy role, Kenny Stills fits it. If you want someone to be wide receiver for kick return specialist, that's not Kenny Stills. From Prasan, listening from India, go Cowboys. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I love that we got some international flavor here. This is not just America's team for the Cowboys. This is the world's team. Let's accept that as, as it relates to the NFL. Another super chat from Fat Sushi Man. Uh, over, under, Cowboys defensive turnovers this year. It's a great question. Uh, the, the issue for the Cowboys here. They haven't been much of a, of a takeaway team. And that, that was very true, not just this past year, but frankly, under most, or, uh, under most, for, uh, or most of the years under Rod Marinelli. So it's, it's, it's been a, a compounding issue year over year after, after year. This is just a team that does not get takeaways. I'm doing my, my quick math here. The Cowboys last year averaged 1.1 per game. That was 25th worst in the NFL. So can I honestly just get to like, can I get to 1.5? Like that's top 10. If, if I can get to 1.4, like I'm feeling pretty darn good about it. So if, if I can get around 22 a game, or wow, 22 total for the season, I think that might be a, a optimistic, but still within reasonable over under. From Spider Rain, 
How deadly would the Cowboys' offense be if they gave Dak the option to run more? There, there were several times last year that I, I kept wondering, where's the, where's the read option call? There were a couple weeks it was in the game plan, then suddenly it wasn't. I, the the off, offenses are always going to be better if you can throw the football. That's just how the, the game of, of the NFL works these days. But I, I, it does add another element. It can help, if only, kind of just like play action, help freeze the linebackers, get, get them to suck in. It, it just makes them have another thing they have to worry about. Maybe they have to waste a spy on plays where Dak's not going to run. So I, I want to see a little bit more of it, but I, I don't want to make it become the entire offense. But, yeah, I, th I think the read option and the always working quarterback draw should be more of a factor. Salux, do you think we will win a Super Bowl under Mike McCarthy? Certainly hope so, right? Otherwise, you feel like you missed another window that was open. I think you, you, I was a little worried about just how the window would look entering this offseason. I feel at least, especially after losing Quinn and Jones, about as good as I possibly could think to that, that NFL draft. I think the window's open in this, I'll call it five year window, the lifetime of McCarthy's contract with the Cowboys right now. I hope it happens. I, I want to believe it happens. So I'm, I'm going to say yes, that it will. And if you guys agree with me, I want you guys to like this video. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to speak positive things out into the universe as it relates to the Dallas Cowboys. And a winning a Super Bowl with Mike McCarthy feels like the most positive thing we could possibly speak. So if you agree with me and think the answer is yes, I want you guys to like this video. Damian Alvarez wants to know about Dar Darquez Denard. I don't... Sure, uh, whatever, like, but why? He's a, he's, an, he's, an, he's a solid nickel corner. I got those guys on my team. I got Jordan Lewis. I got Anthony Brown. I don't know if Denard's an upgrade over any of them, and if, and if he is, it's probably pretty minimal. So I just I don't think that makes sense for the Dallas Cowboys. Like, and we, we had the trade talk around Rasul Douglas earlier. doesn't make sense. I think Denard might be better than Worley, but Worley is an outside guy. Like, Denards was a slot guy. I don't need that on, on my roster, so I'm, I'm going to pass in the end there, Damian. If I add another corner, I'm looking for a guy that could compete to be a number one guy. Next up from uh, Guillermo, uh, Tyler Beatus, a.k.a. Tyler Badass. Yes, that is a good nickname. Starting, he'll have a chance. I still think that with an abbreviated offseason and preseason and all of that, it, it works in favor of some of these young guys. So possible, yes. I just think that maybe year one, Joe Looney is your favorite, maybe even Connor McGovern, if Connor Williams gets, gets healthy quickly. I think at some point you'll see Biotis get a full-fledged chance and earn that starting role at center. Another super chat from today's MVP, King J. Gabriel Stills or Samuel trade makes sense for wide receiver four. Um, well, Taylor, I'll, I'll go kind of in reverse order here. I would love to get Curtis Samuel. But if I'm trading for Curtis Samuel to be my number four receiver, I feel like, A, I've probably overpaid because I'm not maximizing him. Because he should be a receiver three at least. I, I would have done that had I missed out on CeeDee Lamb. I would have explored that trade during the NFL draft. I mean, the, the Panthers aren't going to sell him cheap, so it doesn't really make a ton of sense for the Cowboys in the end. But he's a great player. If he is super cheap for a late-round pick, I'm all over it. Just don't think he's going to be. Kenny Stills, we did mention him. Uh, as a vertical threat if he takes a pay cut. I don't want to pay him $7 million, but he'd be a big some upgrade over Ken, uh, over um, over De Devin Smith. Taylor Gabriel's an interesting name. I wouldn't mind that one. He's still a free agent. I'd be on board, assuming he is indeed, once again, very cheap. So I'd rank them in the order you have them. Gabriel, Stills, and then Samuel. From Sith Carbon. Should we be concerned with the left side of the offensive line health-wise? I think it's perfectly reasonable. I, I really do. Connor Williams now missed two, has missed time in both of his years. That's concerning. That's very concerning. Tyron Smith always misses time. I do not want to move on from him yet, but I think next offseason, that discussion kind of begins a little bit more in earnest. So I think it is a concern. I don't think you can totally sleep over it yet, but that is something to be a little bit worried about. Producer Alicia wants to play this game now. When you see this picture of, of a goat, get it, it's a goat, greatest of all time, who's the first player you think of? So, and then, now obviously this means Cowboys player, because this is the end of the Cowboys show. I'm going to go with Emmett Smith. 
because I still think Emmett is the greatest running back of all time, which is, I guess, a, a hot and controversial take. But Emmett is the NFL's all-time leading rusher. I think longevity matters. We always say the best ability is availability. Emmett was always available. Always. So I see Aikman. <laughs> Someone said Brandon Whedon. Uh, a Brett Maher one. We don't talk about him anymore. Deion Sanders, also a, a, good, uh, a good question on that one. Uh, I, I haven't seen many Jason Wittens. I think you can throw that one in there. I see Dak Prescott. Ooh, Tom Landry. That is a good one there, my friend. All right, Alan Williams next up in here. Over, under, how many sacks will the Cowboys have, including all defensive positions? It's a good question. Um, let me double check, make sure I got my right notes here. Uh, in terms of last year, the Cowboys were 19th in the NFL with 39 sacks. I hope you get a little bit more. I think you can be around league average. The Cowboys, in terms of the, the, the plays that they had, really were, hold on, let me double check the numbers. They were near the bottom half, so that kind of makes sense. There's fewer sacks, fewer plays. I will, I'll put the over-under at, how about 41.5, which would have put you in the top half of the NFL. So over-under 41.5. I see a 25, and I see a 48 from the same person. So we are all over the map here. Over-under 41.5 sacks. Get your votes in there, guys. From A Channel, thank you. Uh, do you see Dallas trading for a talented defensive player? We'll see. I know they've been linked to Adams, obviously. I think that's really what you're asking here in the end. Um, there is a chance in the end, as pessimistic as this sounds, I often vote no because there aren't many trades that happen in the NFL. So I'm playing the odds game. The odds normally say no. From Aiden Ferns, would you rather the Cowboys got Patrick Sertain or Sean Wade in next year's draft? How about either? Um, the issue is I think both of them get taken well before the Cowboys are on the clock, or at least that the route things are early appear to be trending. I feel most confident about Sertain being a outside corner, so I'd probably go with him, but only for the time being. From Bat Peterson, Cowboys going back to a zone blocking scheme. That's what ZBS means. To the detriment of Lael Collins. Um, I, well, I don't know what this Cowboys offense is exactly going to end up looking like in terms of this particular season and they've had some success with it they, they did a little bit of everything last year between zone blocking and, and gap blocking schemes I, I think in terms of the changes on offense it'll probably be more of a passing game change but Kellen Moore is still in charge Collins played great last year great in the passing game great in the run game I hope whatever changes they, they make don't negatively impact Collins I just don't know exactly what this Cowboys offense is going to look like, so I, I don't want to you know, say one way or the other if it's zone or gap or whatever type of scheme they run. So it's, 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 a, it's a really good question, Bat. I just don't know what the answer is yet. Now, if I did not get to your question, I am sorry. I had about 700-plus people watching live right now. Simply can't get to all of your questions in the span of an hour. So if we did not get to them, my DMs are open. Hit me up on Twitter at what going down. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.